From the earliest times, people believed that the Earth was the center of the universe. The evidence was irrefutable. The sun obviously orbited the Earth, and at night the stars rotated overhead. The Earth was clearly at the center of a complex celestial sphere. This incorrect model of the universe survived the assaults of many great minds. The first serious cracks in this common knowledge appeared when the Renaissance astronomer Copernicus put forward some powerful arguments for a heliocentric model of the solar system, the model we have today. Systems and events are often not what we perceive them to be, no matter how compelling the evidence. Consider our relationship with plants. It is common knowledge that we humans have manipulated and cultivated plants to meet our needs. Evidence is everywhere. Check the landscape around your community and you will find plants serving humankind. Shade trees, fields of food grains and exotic flowering plants decorating our homes and public spaces. All cultivated and controlled to serve us. Recently I discovered an interesting perspective on our relationship with plants. In this online article, the author suggests that we are deluding ourselves if we think that plants are passively waiting to be exploited by us. He suggests they are aggressively positioning themselves to use us to meet their needs and desires. This story starts in Taiwan, where the author visited the Taiwan International Orchid Show. The site is huge. Hundreds of acres are dedicated to displaying and cultivating orchids. Taiwan's obsolete sugarcane railway has been resurrected to bring guests to the exposition. Among the visitors are commercial buyers. They have come from all over the world to purchase orchids. Orchidacea is at the center of a very significant industry. The massive displays at an orchid convention seem to be a testament to human ingenuity. Thousands of plants confined and on display, a triumph of man over nature. Is this really a triumph of human ingenuity? Our correspondent thinks not. He goes so far as to suggest that at this event, Orchidacea has actually infiltrated the board office of a large corporation, where, quietly and unnoticed, it is manipulating decision-making to support its own needs and desires. About this takeover, he says, The plants have seized the corporation's infrastructure and placed all the company's resources at the disposal of their frantic will to hybridize and propagate. The orchids have spread over vast tracts and erected an elaborate network of equipment. They have augmented their reproductive systems through the appropriation of diverse materials and species. Would Darwin agree with this analysis? I suspect he would. Orchids have demonstrated an amazing ability to take advantage of the animal world. This orchid, Ophrys apifera, disguises itself as a female bee. Male bees of the species attempt to mate with this facade, only to succeed in fertilizing an orchid. This orchid, Mormodes badea, seduces male bees with a powerful fragrance. Attracted to the flower to collect this perfume, these male bees pollinate Mormodes. Have we been seduced by Orchidacea? Considering the human endeavor dedicated to the cultivation and migration of orchids, one could argue that we have been. Originating in temperate forests and tropical jungles, orchids have multiplied and covered the planet. They inhabit offices on Wall Street and occupy homes and cultivated parklands in every corner of the world. An incredibly successful migration, largely accomplished with the innocent help of Homo sapien. To read the original article that inspired this video, visit our website at hylaroad.com orchids. Follow the link.